All right. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tommy Murillo. I'm the Neary Lehigh IT Systems Manager. I'm going to be presenting the Neary Lehigh Real-Time Multidirectional Experimental Facility Overview on behalf of uh, Dr. Jim Rickles uh, today. So um, again, we're going to you know present the overview of the site and then go into more details about our aspects of what we do and, and highlight our facility. So first, uh, what is the Neary Lehigh uh, experimental facility. Okay, so we are a former NICE site and uh, we are called the Real-Time Multidirectional or short for RTMD Earthquake Simulation Facility. Uh, a very unique facility in that we have a um, portfolio of equipment, instrumentation and infrastructure, test beds and uh, experimental simulation control protocols that facilitate large-scale multidirectional testing in our laboratory. Uh, the benefits of our laboratory being very large, and I'll show to mention shortly, is that we can perform concurrently multiple large-scale experiments at the same time. Uh, at the end of the NICE phase, we were highlighting, uh, I think we had six experiments going on at the same time in our facility, and you could see the picture on the right showing that. Uh, we have a, a, a very experienced staff that, sorry, I just had, a, there was some background noise. I was. Uh, moving my daughter stuff. Um, we have an experienced staff that's uh, between welders, technicians, um, managerial staff, and uh, instrumentation that have been there for 10 plus years, each of them. So we have hundreds of year, man years of experience there with our staff. And again, our facility is it exists within the Atlas Center at Lehigh University, which also provides additional resources I could go into more detail with later on. Um, the Atlas Center uh, at the mountaintop at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the Advanced Technology for Large Structural Systems Center that was uh, developed in the mid 80s and commissioned in 90s. Here, uh, we will go into the strengths of our facility. Again, we are a large scale multi-directional testing facility that enables real-time loading of structures and systems using hydraulic actuation um, and power systems. And then these actuators are able to be controlled using adaptive compensation methods, which ensures that you're tracking your experiment displacement commands uh, properly within milliseconds of, uh, of timing requirements. And uh, we also focus um, primarily on hybrid simulation. And there are various hybrid simulation protocols that are uh, used throughout the, the world and the industry that we have you know, pioneered on our own. Um, and part of hybrid simulation, the elements are the integration algorithms that are developed to make this happen and to be stable. Uh, including in that you have your analytical models that you develop your substructures in. And uh, these can be done locally on a computer or distributed over the internet. And uh, part of that is being able to do that in, in three dimensions. So we have developed kinematic compensation methods uh, based on geometric space for multi-directional compensation. Um, the most important thing with hybrid simulation, again, we had talked about compensation, is tracking things, uh, is tracking your command and your feedback in real time and being able to get accurate control. So for stability of your models. And uh, recently we've uh, investigated different ways to improve our capabilities through online model updating um, and not noted here, but also neural network designs and, and using GPUs to model large structures to get uh, good responses for larger models. and. Um, we have provided a data model back in the NICE phase, we provided a data model structure for large scale and for hybrid experiments. And uh, part of our facility strengths is the instrumentation, the portfolio of instrumentation that we have available to researchers. Uh, we have various data acquisition systems and other advanced instrumentations like a digital image correlation system and as far as and other various advanced transducers. Um, and our facility, part of the Atlas facility has crane systems and uh, forklift, et cetera, for helping to uh, you know, move experiments and projects around. Uh, we talk about our people. Uh, again, we have, like I said, over a hundred hours of, of man year experience there. And, and we have a very tight group of people that know each other intimately and uh, know each other's strengths. So we can work off each other, uh, various disciplines, uh, including structural engineering, earthquake, geotechnical, um, and you know, air elasticity and wind. Uh, and you could you know, go through the list of all the different disciplines. Myself, coming from a computer and software engineering point of view, we bring in all aspects of engineering. And uh, so our knowledge base is very strong and we're able to produce results uh, effectively and efficiently for our users and researchers. 
Um, and you know, we have been the pioneers in real-time hybrid simulation, developing the protocols, developing the data models. So our expertise is uh, you know fairly higher in that, and we pride ourselves on that. So you know, coming to Lehigh with the ideas of doing real-time hybrid simulation, we will guarantee that your experiments are successful. Uh, and uh, we also partner with other industries. And uh, you know, we have relationships outside in industries like Taylor devices provide nonlinear uh, viscous dampers. We have been working with them for years and you know, commissioning those devices and <clears throat> providing results for how they can be used in real-time hybrid simulations and have applied codes uh, that have been you know, presented to the industry that uh, you know, are being used today. Uh, Dr. Rickles uh, briefly introduced uh, the people that are involved in today's workshop, uh, myself included with uh, Dr. Cusco and Dr. Cao. Uh, we also have, um, you know, in benef uh, on behalf of Dr. Richard Sauce, he's the co-PI, he's the co-PI of our NERI program and the PI uh, director, sorry, of the Atlas facility and is very well involved in most of the experiments that are going on there. And uh, we shouldn't, you know, pass on uh, talking about uh, Derek Fritchman, our lab manager, who makes sure all of these experiments are properly engineered, commissioned with, along with our capacity building partners, as you can see below, uh, and the different industries. And uh, um, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna introduce all of them, but you can see, and you can have contact with those if you need. All right, so let's focus on the experimental uh, testing capabilities at our facility. We had talked about large scale, real-time hybrid simulation. We acronym that with RTHS. So when you see that shorthand, uh, we are able to do that with the facility that we have. We have large scale hybrid simulation. So real time, non real time hybrid simulation doesn't always have to be in real time. Hybrid simulations can be done uh, at a slower time. Uh, so we are able to do that. Large scale real time hybrid simulation with multiple experimental substructures. So in some cases you have seen traditional real time hybrid simulations on a desktop or in a lab with one actuator. No, we could do them with multiple actuators, various types of actuators and controlled equipment. So we have the ability to control multiple actuators and multiple um, physical substructures at once in concurrency with analytical substructures. Uh, we have the capability of doing geographically distributed hybrid simulation where highlighted um, in the past, we have done that with other NICE facilities and uh, we have provided results showing that this capability exists to do geographically distributed simulation or in real time with Dr. Richard Christensen uh, being able to have multiple physical substructures operating concurrently using a real time system with a predictor corrector type algorithm to ensure that time dependent systems are, um, you know, are validated. So uh, finally, and we'll in this list or maybe towards the end is we have Predefine a characterization systems, quasi static loading, where you're doing something in a, you know, to figure out how an experiment will work or respond, or putting things in a temperature control chamber. Uh, we have different ways of, of that, and uh, we, whether it's smaller or larger, this one is an example of a gravity, um, a shear wall system under gravity load and lateral loading. It was a three dimensional system, um, and it was slow, it took about a day to get through the full experiment. But uh, this is considered, uh, you know, a successful, um, you know, large-scale quasi-static experiment. And finally, we have the ability to do dynamic testing. So not just hybrid, but doing high-speed loading, high-demand systems with our actuators. And I'll go into more of the capabilities of what our actuators can do. And on top of that, finally, we show we have a grillage system that has the capabilities of doing these impact-type testing. So swinging a large shipping container and impacting it into a wall to give responses on how like tsunami effects on, on systems would, um, would respond. And finally, um, our soil system, our soil box system, which I'll show more details about later. Uh, the laboratory infrastructure, like I show the picture, you can see down below, it's a 40 by 50 by 100 foot uh, three-dimensional lab and uh, with multiple anchor points that are systemed uh, at five foot apart for a grid-based system that's easy for a, a user to come in and, design, and divine, this, excuse me, define their system in a CAD drawing. And uh, our strong four, 40 by 100 feet uh, with the same anchor system. So uh, included in that is our you know, hydraulic supply system with our various uh, inventory of actuators and various hydro, uh, servo hydraulic control systems. And I'll go into more detail about that equipment uh, coming up now. So the uh, equipment and power systems that we're gonna talk about. Uh, the most important thing we had talked about is having enough power to, inf to uh, 
uh, provide real-time hybrid simulation of multiple actuators at once. So our facility can do that. Well, we look at a successful real-time hybrid simulation to be uh, at the minimum or average, I'd say about 30 seconds. We can do that. We can go longer depending on the, 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 the demand or even faster depending um, on what the experiment uh, requires. So our hydraulic supply system, we have uh, five 120 gallon per minute pumps um, along with an accumulation system that provides an excess, uh, an excess of you know, 3,500 PSI of pressure to our systems using uh, 16 piston accumulators. So you know, more boom uh, and when you need that for those like high peak, high velocity demands. Our NERI actuators, which were purchased and used through a, from the NICE uh, phase, are uh, from servo test, uh, servo test systems. And we have two of them that have a capability of 500 or so kips and three of 380 kips of uh, force that are a meter in length or 20 inches and have the capacity of doing 45, 33 to 45 inch per second or like a little over uh, 1.2 meters per second of speed. So high speed, high force, um, high demand actuators that are reliable that we can time within a, a millisecond or two of response using compensation. So these actuators are effective for doing these large scale hybrid simulations or high uh, dynamic applications with our servo valves. And each of these actuators can have three high speed servo valves for ensuring that the power demands are, are uh, you know, supplied to these actuators. So, um, the Atlas equipment and the Lehigh equipment. We have a combination of other an inventory at the Atlas facility to be able to do these large concurrent experimental projects. So what we see here is that um, the facility enables this. We can do multiple systems at once. Uh, if you look at the top left, we have test beds for actuators on the, the and top left and right, test beds for actuators, along with having a large, um, you know, uh, CLT wood experiment in the lab uh, at the same time, along with another uh, you know, NERI project, which is a, a, a collector beam. So we have all these projects in our lab spaced out properly so that they are safe, uh, they don't interact with each other, but the hydraulic demands are supplied to each one of these systems. So let's talk about how we control these systems and what is necessary for doing real-time hybrid simulation. You need to have an integrated control system with all of the IT equipment. So this is, uh, designed to allow us to do all of the different testing methods that I described uh, previously. And these algorithms reside primarily on our real-time compute systems, which are developed by SpeedGoat. SpeedGoat is a vendor that works with MathWorks. So primarily our algorithms are you know, designed using MathWorks software, MATLAB and Simulink. And these experiments can be run in what we call true real-time or a like expanded, slower, fast real-time, uh, a fast time scale where we slow down the system. If it's not rate dependent, we can get the same responses out of our systems. Um, and if it needs to be a distributed hybrid test, sometimes you can't do real time because of literally the speed of light and the internet and you can't get data back and forth between you know, parts of the world. So you slow it down. So our integrated system, which I'll go into more detail, allows for that. And we have distributed hybrid uh, software that some of uh, people are familiar with in OpenFresco and OpenSeas and you can develop your own and come back in. So for instance, we've had researchers that have come in with a package built into Simulink, we validate it and we throw it into our system and it works. So um, again, some of the ancillary equipment for our facility is the crane, the mechanical testing for calibration and loading and tensile strength. And then we look at, we have our auditorium, which is now COVID uh, regulated so that people are spaced properly. So um, you know, looking at that, we have a full facility for teaching, for education, for research. Uh, with all of the other types of things that you might want to do in an engineering facility. Uh, let's look about our test beds, uh, the focus on the, uh, the capabilities of us. We have this large lateral resistance system test bed, the red frame that you see here. Uh, it's a, and inside of it, it's, you see that we could have, it's a four story two bay 60, you no, know, it's like a, a, a one, a 60% scale system or two thirds scale MRF system that's built into that bracing frame. So the red frame is not the test frame. The red frame is that reaction frame that is going to provide the system to be built into and for safety. So 45 by 60, uh, 30, sorry, 45 by 36 feet in dimensions. And we can do both, you know, any type of simulations of a, of, of a frame system inside of there. Uh, we could have, have up to, you know, on the wall on the east, on sorry, on the, the right side, you could see four actuators that are connected in there. So large structural systems, large demand and, um, hybrid or real-time, we've done it all. 
We also have a test bed here for non-structural components for doing multi-dimension, a multi-directional seismic simulation. So we can have actuators and you can see the actuators one, two, and three are um, in you know, different directions in the 2D plane. And then we can load from the top. We showed the picture of our shear uh, system before that was in three dimensions as well. So we're able to do multi-directional real-time testing or dynamic testing with this system as well. In this case, we have a piping system that we have that's a three-dimensional building piping system with a numerically simulated, um, this was a hybrid numerically simulated um, you know, structure on top, overhead frame. We have our full-scale damper test beds. And uh, these are, we have uh, the capabilities of having up to you know, five actuators in this setup here, but these damper our test beds you know, have the same capabilities that I showed before of our actuators of the you know, demands that are required. And uh, we'll see more details about that you know, later. We've recently introduced our real-time cyber physical structural systems laboratory. Um, and this is a new resource that enhances the capabilities of our site. So, um, smaller system, quicker turnaround time in prototyping designs or getting results back. It doesn't require as much of a, a lead in developing a system as are some of our bigger systems take or bigger actuators. So these test beds are uh, effective and easier to get something in quicker and turn around things and turn around experimental time. And um, cyber physical meaning that we are in, encouraging hybrid simulation and numerical simulation uh, in combination with these actuators. Uh, these are MTS uh, actuators, model 244, uh, various changes in some of them. Some are faster, some are slower, uh, not slower in a bad way, but just you know, less demand. And uh, we also have recently included electric actuation systems for imposing controlled forces onto specimens that might require it. So for instance, tightening and loosening bands on a device that might want to impose some forces and having these like, you know, semi-active controlled type systems. Uh, the electric actuators are great to have that without having to in introduce our hydraulic system. So uh, again, these use the same type of control in uh, control systems. So our control systems are integrated throughout the lab. We can, We've done this, we could have a, an experiment going on with some of our larger systems and then interact with the cyber physical lab at the same time. So our lab is compatible with each other, no matter where you are in the lab. And you can see in our user's manual, it specified all of our specifications for our actuators. So when you need to configure an experiment, you could find that there. And uh, <clears throat> so um, this looks like this was put in the wrong spot. I'll just move on. Our reduced scale soil box here, I wanna highlight this. It's a six by six by six um, uh, design with smaller actuators and uh, data acquisition system. Um, and then we have various sensors and advanced, and you could throw our digital imaging correlation system in there. And so we're at the capabilities of doing soil, pile type testing, loading testing into soil. Uh, and we have tried some hybrid simulations with this box as well. So that's our soil box system. And, uh, and I described the, sorry, I went too fast, the tsunami impact system as well. So with the capabilities of doing high-speed cameras, high-speed demand um, or high-speed response with our acceleration and uh, data acquisition system, uh, we have those capabilities. So um, I'll briefly go, you know, skip through this. We have a list of experimental and training support that we help. So we have a guideline of how when users come in, th these are the steps that they follow about you know, using design safe tools to develop your project and getting trained in our laboratory when you're there on site and you know, validating and going through all of the different sensors and uh, data acquisition and control systems. And then you know, we make sure your experiment is run safely, we enforce safety protocols, conduct it, and then locally archive that data and make sure it gets put up. So there is always a process for any researcher and it's documented well for our training support here. Um, our IT infrastructure, when you want, and this is uh, you know focusing more on the systems that we're using, uh, we have a laboratory that is, showed this picture before that integrates all of the IT equipment. When we talk about servers, cameras, computers, data acquisition systems, and the actuators, we have an architecture of that that's all focused using a reflective memory system called ScramNet. And uh, what that allows is high speed, seamless interaction between computer systems and fiber optic based network, which some of you might be familiar with it, um, an industry protocol for sharing data among systems. And that's important for realizing real time hybrid simulation because you can't have any latency between systems. Um, let's focus on the data acquisition uh, capabilities of sensors in our lab. We have a Pacific instrument system that has over 300 channels of data. And th that channel, those channels of data can be anything from voltage inputs to strain bridge completion circuits or thermocouples, uh, 
it's highly configurable and various sampling rates. So high speed rates or slower down, you could do anything you want with that control with that data acquisition system. Um, we'll talk about the control systems that we have. Uh, we have various control systems. Uh, the one that we highlight with our NERI program is the server test systems pulsar control system. Uh, again, when we talk about actuator control systems, these are PID control systems and, uh, you know, like test uh, experiment flow type systems where you configure your experiment, what you're going to be doing with it. And uh, these are, you know, highly configurable and easy to control actuators and, and give high speed responses to them. We also incorporate a Wyman inertia, which is a lab view or a Veristan type system where it incorporates national instruments and uh, data. So sorry, National Instruments uh, hardware, so that if you're using a National Instruments device at your facility and want to bring it there, you could plug that right into our system. So I know National Instruments tends to be widely used throughout the industry and, and, and education. So we provide that as a resource as well with LabVIEW. Uh, our simulation system is our SpeedGoat system, which is a uh, you know, target for real-time compiling on a Simulink-based target. Simulink is your graphical interface for programming in a MATLAB MathWorks environment. And that allows us to quickly turn around simulation designs, numerical systems and control of equipment in there. So, um, and that's all run through uh, the MathWorks interface. So we have the ability to see data, control things, and it's our simulation coordinator for running an experiment for either way, whether you're doing a pure numerical simulation for safety, where you can design the whole lab in a kind of like a model in the loop or hardware in the loop design, we have those capabilities there uh, processing it. So they, they allow you for doing parallel, pro we have multiple of these, so we can do parallel processing with them, synchronized uh, the, the, the systems and have larger models or do different tasks for them. So one can be your data logger or processor, another one can be your numerical simulation. You bring your, your own infrastructure, we provide the tools for you and um, you know, you, we, we make sure your experiment works. So uh, the, the way that this integration system works is, you know, we'll look at the hybrid simulation model flow. Uh, your simulation coordinator will run your, say your um, integration method or your finite element solution here. You're gonna be defining X and you know, X dot here, are your displacement commands and velocities that you're gonna be imposed into your experiment. At the beginning of that experiment, or that we'll call that that integration time, you're gonna be doing a real-time hybrid simulation. So you have a numerical structure of a building and then you need to control it with an actuator at a certain degree of freedom. Those commands need to be synchronized. So you see at the top in the green, the experimental com component is now sent to an actuator. At the bottom, at the same time, you're gonna determine the state of that system at that time. So as the experiment's happening, this is real-time. Uh, the actuator is being controlled within our time. Um, and then by the end of that time, which we could say maybe be a couple of milliseconds, you receive the state of your computational model, and then you look at the, the response of your set of your specimen. So if you have a damper system, you look at what is the force coming back from that damper at that time step that's required. You take all of that back and you sum it into your system as restoring forces from your experimental and analytical structure that gets hit back into your integration algorithm. And here is your closed loop explicit algorithm for doing this um, you know, integration of of a hybrid simulation. So that's how this system works in real time. And uh, when you visualize that in Simulink, this is the image of what you're seeing where you have that same thing on the left side, you have your uh, calculation of your commands and that's going either through your experimental structure at the bottom or your numerical simulation in the middle. And then, you know, responding with some data and turning things back. So you could see graphically, it's easy to represent that. And then- Tommy, if, I'm sorry for interruption, but we are- uh, yeah, I'm time. almost done, I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll skip this. This is how you do multiple targets. And uh, you know, we have our simulation safety and uh, I'll just go through quickly. We have capabilities of streaming data and archiving data. So you could view data remotely um, on a screen and we have capabilities of high speed, I mean, high speed cameras, high definition cameras, uh, multiple, you know, over you know, using blue iris to stream that. And our data is backed up um, with you know, over 50 terabytes of, of Synology. And finally, we, we have a data management plan to enforce that that data is safe and stored on Lehigh and at Design Safe. And there's, again, if you wanna look at our data management plan, we have that listed on our site and you could go through that to see how they do, how we store data. And then there's our website and that's it. Okay, thanks Amal, sorry. I was trying to get through it quickly, so. 
Yeah, uh, thank you very much. The, that was very informative. I'm sorry, you just wanted to oh, okay. get back on, on time. It's a lot to get We're to like 15, 15 minutes. minutes late, but that's that's fine. That, that's, um, that's usually a 45 minute uh, presentation. In 15 yeah, I understand. It's, it's a lot of information. But All right. I encourage everyone to contact you for more details if they have questions.